I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Livingood? Present. Councilor Micucci? Present. Councilor McDonald? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Regis? Present. Councilor Spinelli? Present. Councilor Vandal? Present. Nine here. Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, April 23rd, 2012 meeting. So moved. Second. Do I have any? Abstain. Ab abstentions, one abstention? Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Abstain. Abstain. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Eight yes, one abstain. Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports, A, general government. Councilor Spinelli? Uh, Madam Chair, a meeting of the general government subcommittee was held on Wednesday, April 25th, 2012 in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Spinelli, committee members, Councilor Vandal, Councilor Regis, citizen members, Stephanie D. Martino and Gabriel LaFleche. Also in attendance were Town Manager Clark, Karen Harnoy, Mindy Ernst Fournier, Maddie Doust, Will Knoyer, and Gus Steves. Uh, for the sake of brevity, Madam Chairman, there were 18 agenda items, all relating to the uh, FY 2013 budget. Uh, suffice it to say that all agenda items were passed unanimous to go forward to the town council for consideration as part of the manager's budget. In other business, manager Clark passed out a proposed Schedule 5. Both Schedule 5 and Schedule 1 reflect a 1% increase in reorganization. Mr. Clark proposed a joint meeting between the General Government Subcommittee and the PPP Subcommittee prior to the May 21st Council meeting to review both schedules. Councilor Spinelli would confirm with Councilor Langevin to schedule a joint meeting for May 9th, which has been so scheduled. Um, if anybody wishes to read the full thing, the full uh, minutes, they're available. <coughs> That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Agenda item number 4B, DPW. That would be uh, Councillor Vandal. Uh, no report and no meeting schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Um, C, Education and Human Services. Um, Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. An Education and Human Services subcommittee meeting was held Tuesday, May 1st at, uh, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were subcommittee members Councillor Marcucci, Councillor Nicola, citizens members Holly Christo and Michael Janes. Also in attendance was Town Manager Clark, Councillor Marcucci, Chair. <coughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Marcucci, for that. Uh, the meeting was called at 7 p.m. Agenda item one was to discuss and vote to approve the change order number four in the amount of $46,417, revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. Councilor Nicola stated the school building committee went over these cha uh, charges and it was unanimously approved. Mr. Clark discussed the charges with significant dollar amount changes. Mr. Clark stated that at the beginning of the contract it was to be a two-year project and Consigli has stated that the building should be ready to be turned over 6-18-12. This is a timeline of approximately 18 months. Councilor Marcucci asked how the change orders come about and is the school building committee or manager asked about the changes. Mr. Clark and Councilor Nicola stated that it is a collaborated effort between the school department, school building committee, town man manager and Consigli. A motion was made by Holly Christo, seconded by Michael James, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve change order number four in the amount of $46,417, revised total as requested by Consigli Construction, and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. <coughs> vote by show of hands, unanimous 4-0. Agenda item number two was to discuss and vote to approve the proposal for the GBE Technologies of East Providence, Rhode Island, in an amount not to exceed $336,540 for the installation of telephony and LAN LAN technology in the new middle high school. Mr. Clark stated this was vetted through the school building committee and was approved unanimously. Four bids were received and reviewed by Terry Wiggins. All four bids were over budget and Mr. Wiggins worked out different budget scenarios in order to remain at or under budget using the Cisco platform which is preferred. 
After making adjustments without sacrificing performance or long-term viability, a lower cost proposal was reached with CBE Technologies of East Providence, Rhode Island. A motion was made by Michael Jaynes and seconded by Holly Christa with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the proposal <coughs> from GBE Technologies of East Providence, Rhode Island in an amount not to exceed $336,540 for the installation of telephony and LAN land technology in the new middle high school. Vote by show of hands, unanimous 4-0. A motion to adjourn was made by Councilor Marcucci, seconded by Michael Jaynes. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 4-0. The meeting was adjourned at 725, respectfully submitted by Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. And at this point, I'm looking to call a meeting for Tuesday, the 15th at 7 o'clock, um, to discuss uh, a presentation perhaps uh, by our cable committee and also any follow-up to any trash issues that we've been working on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'd just like to make one correction, if I could, please. In the second agenda item, the name of the company is CBE Technologies, not GBE. And I wanted to um, make that note, notation because we will be voting on that this evening, and it is C, as in Kathy, BE Technologies. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. And thank you, Councillor. Um, D, Planning and Development, Councillor Livingood. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Meeting of the Planning and Development Subcommittee was held on Tuesday, April 26, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Livingood, Subcommittee Member Councillor Spinelli, Citizen Member Evelyn Petrelli. Also in attendance was Town Manager Clark, Karen Harnoys, Cassandra Ackley, and David Payer. Councillor Clements and George Parent were excused. Meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. Agenda Item 1, Review and Vote to Approve FY 2013 Planning Board Budget. The overall budget increase is 0.77%, except for the 1% increase for the recording clerk. This budget is level funded. A motion was made by Councilor Spinelli, seconded by Mrs. Petrelli, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY 2013 Planning Board budget at $3,006, which is an increase of 77%. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, 3 to 0. Agenda item 2, review and a vote to approve FY 2013 economic development budget. The overall budget increase is 1.18%. Increase reflects 1% increase in long and longevity bonus. The director's position is the only position funded by the town. All other positions are granted grant funded. Ms. Ackley asked that if, when, if and when funds could be added to the budget, should she would like to add, add a, in planning magazines place ads in planning magazines and advertising in our town. Someday I'll learn to read. A motion was made by Councilor Spinelli and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the uh, FY 2013 Planning Board budget at $80,037, which is an increase of 1.18%. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. Agenda item three, vote to recommend that the Town Council Ask the Southbridge Planning Board to receive public comment and consider an amendment to the Southbridge Zoning Bylaw to allow raising and keeping of household chickens on smaller lots. Mrs. Ackley asked that agenda number four be considered along with agenda three in discussing this item. Mrs. Petrelli asked what the state law says about raising chickens. Mrs. Ackley stated the state says you have to have two to five acres and prove you generate an income of $1,000 per acre per year to have chickens. Councilor Spinelli explained that agenda item number three is to start the process for a bylaw, and agenda item four is to have a temporary process to alleviate the request made by citizens. A motion was made by Councilor Spinelli, seconded by Mrs. Petrelli, with a favorable recommendation to Council to ask the Southbridge Planning Board to receive public comment and consider an amendment to the Southbridge Zoning Bylaw to allow raising and keeping of household chickens on smaller lots under the following conditions by permit from the Board of Health in single family zones only on lots of at least three quarter acre in size with chickens kept at least 25 feet from adjacent lots for a maximum of six adult hens and a maximum of 12 chickens in total per property with appropriate housing for every season enforced by the animal control officer, no roosters allowed and with friend fenced area for all chickens. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. 
<coughs> Agenda item number four, vote to recommend that in lieu of considering a zoning bylaw amendment to allow the raising and keeping of household chickens for now, the town council request Southbridge Planning Board, SPGA, hears and consider special permits for up to four property owners of lots under five acres in a single family zone only to raise and keep household chickens on a trial basis. A motion was made by Councilor Spinelli and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli to amend the wording as following. <coughs> Vote to recommend that the Town Council allow the Southbridge Planning Board slash SPGA to hear and consider special permits for up to four property owners, owners of lots under five acres in single family zones only to raise and keep household chickens on a trial basis. The Planning Board, SPGA, should consider the following when placing conditions on special permits, but may include additional conditions as needed. Permits from the Board of Health, lot size, space from adjacent lots, maximum adult hens and maximum total chickens per property, appropriate housing, enforcement requirements, no roosters allowed, and fencing requirements. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. Motion was made by Councilor Spinelli, seconded by Mrs. Petrelli, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the previous motion as amended. <coughs> Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, three to zero. Motion to adjourn was made by Mrs. Petrelli, seconded by Councilor Spinelli. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor. Meeting adjourned at 7.25 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. And we just completed one. We had a meeting of the Planning and Development Subcommittee tonight at 6.30. And we discussed to accept the petition from the town manager requesting the town council vote its intention to lay out commercial drive as a public way and to refer to the planning board for non-binding recommendation. The motion was accepted and passed unanimously to bring tonight's council meeting. And that's all I have for now. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Marcucci, did you have something you want to? Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Councillor Livingood. Councillor, on agenda item number three, where uh, Mrs. Ackley stated that the state says you have to have two to five acres to prove you generate an income of $1,000 per acre per year to have chickens. Why is that? Why do you have to generate income? Yeah, if I do believe Sandy Ackley or the manager could probably, but that has to do with, I do believe, labeling the property as farmland for tax purposes. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I thought Sandy was here, yeah. but I, don't, I didn't see her. No. But that's, that's got to do with people get tax breaks, and in order to be labeled as a farm, you get a tax break. In order to be labeled as a farm, you've got to make money on it to consider it to be a farm. Even if it's for their own private use? Well, that's, but, that's got to do with getting a farm designation, okay. I do believe. I, I don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not an expert on that. All right. But it, I do believe people <laughs> with farms get a tax break from the state. Okay. And in order to call yourself a farm, you have to be a farm that actually sells something. Thank you. Councillor, I believe that Mrs. Ackley will be here for when, the agenda, when we, we vote, go to vote on that. She did tell me she planned on being here so that she would answer any questions. So hopefully she can help you then. Okay. Councillor Clements. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure there was a correction. Um, Councillor Livingood just mentioned 77% on agenda item one. It's 0.77% increase, just in case there was any misconception. I thought I said there. point. That's mine. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, it was 77, so it kind of raised eyebrows over here, but it was only a 0.77 increase on agenda item one. So, in case anyone's paying attention. I made somebody happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Okay. Um, e is protection of persons and property. Councillor Lanchman. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no report, but I do, as Councillor Spinelli said, have a joint meeting this coming Wednesday, May 9th, 7 o'clock, uh, with general government reviewing Schedule 5 and Schedule 1. And then immediately after that, we will be having our own separate meeting, PPP. Um, so again, that topic will be discussion of sergeant position. Thank you, that's all I have this evening. Thank you very much. Agenda item number five is Chairwoman's announcements. I have a couple. The first one is we've been discussing budget. The actual public hearing on the budget will be held at 6.30 prior to our next town council meeting, which is May 21st. So for anybody interested in attending that, it will be right before our town council meeting at 6.30 right here in the uh, McKinnon Council Chambers. Also, tomorrow, Tuesday, May 8th, is the last day 
to turn in papers if you are running for any um, of the offices that will be um, coming up in the general election in June. You have till 5 o'clock tomorrow evening to pass in your signed paperwork. And lastly, but not leastly, um, you know, we're coming up to the one year anniversary, June 1st, on the tornado that hit Southbridge. And some of the members of the council, and the department heads, and some of the citizens in town have been discussing amongst themselves what we could do. What we plan on doing is having a get-together. Usually around this time of the year, the future of Southbridge puts together a meet and greet at the community center. Instead of doing something like that, the council, heads of departments in the community, and community members are going to get together and have kind of a commemorative dinner. It's for the victims of the tornado, for the volunteers of the tornado, for the townspeople who have lived through the tornado. And the event is scheduled for Friday, June 1st, from 5 to 8 at the Community Center on Chestnut Street. Um, it's kind of a fitting location considering that's where, that was the designated area for a lot of the people who were without everything on that fateful day. It's going to be a cookout. We'll have hot dogs, hamburgers, salads, watermelon, desserts. We figure we're probably going to have a couple hundred people, but we're not sure yet. What I'm, the reason I'm mentioning it now, and I will mention it right up until June 1st, is that this week, Thursday night, there is a meeting scheduled right here in the council chambers upstairs here for anybody interested in participating volunteering any of your time or, or anything else, if you've got any ideas. It's going to be here at 7 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you. And that's all I have. I'm going to move on now to town manager's announcements. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have several this evening, and once again, I will endeavor to, to go through them fairly quickly. Um, the town was actually recognized through the uh, Department of Environmental Protection and I'm just going to read this. It's fairly short. Uh, this is from the Drinking Water Program. Uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, Mass DEP, Drinking Water Program is pleased to extend its congratulations to the Southbridge Water Department for its outstanding performance in 2011. Your system has achieved one of the top scores in the medium to large community system category of the 2012 Public Water System Awards Program. Uh, DEP realized that it's no easy task to keep up with the ever-evolving state and federal drinking water regulations. While most systems are in compliance with regulations, your system has shown excellent, excellent compliance efforts for many years. Uh, there is an award ceremony at the, uh, the Waterworks Museum in Boston on uh, May 8th, which I believe is tomorrow, uh, and a luncheon to follow. I know the uh, director and myself will not be there, but if any members of the council are interested, there are representatives of Whitewater that will be in attendance. And once they get that, we'll have them bring it back and post it in town hall. Uh, secondly, it's funny, on the other side of the coin, we received notice also from Veolia that they were recognized at a, um, at a safety performance standard that uh, Veolia Water of North America uh, with the nation's leading provider, municipal and industrial water and wastewater partnerships continue to significantly outperform public municipal systems as well as private industry water, wastewater, and other comparable utility systems as compared to the most recent data available from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This actually, they have a lost time rate, um, lost time incidence rate well below uh, industry standards. So I thought that was interesting. It is a, uh, a very dangerous business, so it was nice to see that they got recognized for being an uh, industry leader in keeping their employees safe as well as uh, doing a, a good job for us. The next one I have is uh, the Jacob Edwards Library is making a uh, transition in their computer system. Uh, they are switching over to a system called Evergreen ILC. Uh, that tra transition is going to occur on May 25th. So after uh, May 25th, after 6 p.m., 
uh, the library will be closed for a period of time uh, for this transition. I believe it will be open for business. It's that one day. But so the last Saturday that they're going to be open is going to be uh, coming up. May 19th will be the last Saturday. And then it will be closed for the summer per usual and then reopen again in September. We received a uh, notice, I believe it came in Friday's mail, uh, that National Grid is going to be doing some, uh, relocate some gas main. Uh, so the work is going to be done at 345 to 386 East Main Street. Uh, we'll start on May 10th and last approximately 30 days. Uh, work will generally occur between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and there may be some short interruption of gas service. They did send a specific uh, notice to uh, Ideal Pools as one of the companies in that area, so they did send a specific notice to Ideal Pools. But if you are driving in that area and you realize that there's some backup, uh, it is due to, uh, due to some changes to the uh, national, uh, I'm sorry, to the natural gas mains. Last uh, Thursday, I attended a meeting of the um, Fish and Wildlife. Uh, I was encouraged to send on behalf of the council, and I did by different members of the council when we had one of the residents uh, get up to talk about all the debris that was in the, in the various forests. And they did invite us to uh, McKinstry Brook, uh, the fire chief, myself, and the DPW director. Uh, they had folks from, I think he was a Harvard professor, that basically said that with the, um, this is actually from an environmental standpoint, having the trees knocked down was not necessarily a bad thing. It actually helps to promote different types of wildlife. Uh, so they, they, the state, I don't believe, is going to come in and do some of the widespread clearing uh, that you see that in other sections of town. And they're saying that it is something that does occur in nature, and it's not something that necessarily is a, a direct th threat. Uh, I did bring up on behalf of uh, some of the residents that, you know, there has to be some kind of fire stop that's close to these residents. I mean, two houses on Pleasant Street were being rebuilt, and the folks from the uh, Fisheries and Wildlife did acknowledge that and, and will do something to try to make sure that those folks are safe in that area. But it's kind of interesting, and they did it in the tornado, tornado area itself, so a hike in the woods. We are starting up again to do the uh, Southbridge Community Gardens, and we have a uh, press release that is out. Uh, uh, we are accepting applications to reserve garden plots at the community gardens in the downtown area through June 1st. The plots are free to Southbridge residents. They are especially suited for people living within multiple family homes with limited yard space for gardens. Residents can plant flowers, fruits, and vegetables. The town will provide a four by eight four foot by eight foot plots to gardeners on a seasonal basis. Plots are assigned on a first come, first serve basis. The plots are available from May 26th to until October 31st. Residents are responsible for planting and maintaining their individual plots and all responsible for keeping the community garden clean in accordance with the guidelines. Currently we have community gardens located on Chestnut Street, uh, which is actually operated by the Cops and Kids program, Cross Street and Worcester Street. Uh, Worcester Street, which is a handicapped accessible location, and the town is in partnership with the Center of Hope, which they provided the planter box, uh, some soil, and the water barrel, and we also provide the compost bin. Uh, residents are encouraged to sign up as soon as possible, and you can sign up either by calling the health department at 764-4252, or you can go on to and download the application at www.thinkreduce.com. Also on the same, um, the same topic, or similar topic, uh, Southbridge Community Cleanup. Uh, we do have a form online. We have several civic groups that have gone around to clean up certain areas in the community. Uh, we are starting that up again for the 2012 cleanup season. And the Center of Hope, uh, it's nice to see that they are such a, uh, a good partner with us. Uh, they've done a lot on the, um, the skateboard park, but they also have volunteered to clean up locations North Street and Windsor Court, Coombe Street, Chestnut, Cisco, and Morris. And they've also done Central Street, Hook Street, Foster, Joe Capillo Park, West Street, and some trail work. So uh, and they, they've been a, a good ally in terms of trying to keep the, the streets clean, and I do appreciate that effort. Just since we're on that, I just wish to uh, send out uh, George Parent, 
is someone who has been historically a volunteer on this, and, and George is, is not uh, doing altogether that well health-wise. So I just want to at least send my thoughts and prayers. I'm sure members of the council would share that uh, to him and his family through this uh, difficult time. On the, uh, the town was part of a regional economic development project uh, that was spearheaded by the manager and Spencer and it is uh, one that's going to be done through the CMRPC, the Central Mass Regional Planning uh, Group, and they are going to do a collaborative effort to create a shared framework for identifying regional and local priorities, basically uh, material to help promote the region. They're going to look at growth development and land preservation, as well as worker housing opportunities, transportation, and other infrastructure investments. This is an effort to try to get us on the map for uh, industrial development purposes or economic development purposes. Today I received a uh, request from uh, Southridge Bicycle. Uh, they will be doing an event this Saturday at noontime, so Saturday, May 12th at noon. Uh, they have Mr. Ho Mr. Hoyt, who is a racer and a triathlete is going to be uh, at the event and you are encouraged to attend um, and if you could show up approximately uh, by 11:30, that would be appreciated at the location southbridge bicycle shops two more and then i'm done on the um, the next one we are once again setting up to do um, project bread i just wish to uh, thank uh, the school the school department the school department helps to coordinate this uh, on behalf of uh, the residents of the community. Uh, we do have 75% of the, the, young, the young people in the community, 75% are uh, eligible for Project Bread. So th there is a, a real hunger issue in this community. And last year, we were able to uh, expand the program and picked a few additional sites. I wish to thank Margaret Morrissey for having the library as an additional site. And we were able to provide uh, last year, I think they went up, the number of meals went up to, uh, it was 286 um, folks that were assisted in that uh, program, and that was up from 192 the year before and 120 the year before. Uh, and there are certain areas in this community that there is a, a more desperate need, and, and we are trying to work with our, our folks at the uh, state and in the private sector to try to uh, render assistance to those uh, children in need. And then lastly, uh, we have uh, the Southbridge Fest is coming, and that's going to be Saturday, June 2nd, from uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Southbridge Common. Uh, live music, kids' events, food vendors, crafters, and at 11 a.m. there's a parade. This is this year being done in coordination with the 75th anniversary of the uh, local United Way chapter. So uh, for folks that are interested in that, June 2nd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, moving on to agenda item number seven. This evening we have, I believe, a presentation from Tassies. Am I correct? I have Jeff Tassies here. If you would like to come to the podium. very much for inviting me to come tonight. Um, I didn't realize this was part of the town council meeting, but it's a great opportunity for me to just talk a little bit about Tassies and our involvement in the community. Um, we've, uh, with, we just finished a very, very warm winter, which has been good for uh, everybody else but the oil guys um, and the guys that are in the heating business. So um, I would say that to everybody this year that with the price of fuel where it's been, it was a good year to have uh, not had to need as much heat and it was a warmer winter um, and I did want to uh, it also was good for all those people that were fighting with uh, cleaning up after the tornado the early October storm and um, certainly the uh, this winter made cleaning up and those kind of thing a lot easier for all those people that were affected by those things um, Tassie's um, has been around since 1946 when my grandfather started. I'm a third generation Tassie. Um, I didn't think I wanted to be in the heating business and the plumbing business when I was growing up, but um, decided to come back here when I was about 30 years old and uh, been here for 23 years now. And um, 
it's been a great community. I've been, it's been a great to be part of this tri-community area. Um, and so I just wanted to thank all of the customers that I do have um, for the business that they've given me over those years that I've been here, but also wanted to just touch base and thank uh, all the community members that uh, have been part of this community and give their time to this community. So with that being said, I'll just do a quick, uh, I'm going to do a quick run through of, of uh, this presentation that we put together. Essentially, um, we've been in the energy business for since 1959 when we first started the oil business. And um, we, over the last uh, 10 years, we've changed from uh, a um, fuel oil company, plumbing company, heating company, and HVAC service company to a solar company. Um, we recently installed um, nine KWs of solar. And uh, on a day like today, my meter was spinning backwards. Um, we do this installation. installation. Um, we do it both residentially. We did a job in Southbridge recently, and uh, we are in the business of installing solar besides just having it in our own building. Um, there are tremendous tax incentives and et cetera. Um, you've probably seen my car drive around town. Um, this is my little marketing tool. It's a diesel. It gets about 45 miles to the gallon. Um, it does run on biofuel, um, which is what you see here. Um, so this is our new look, our new company today. Um, we did all those other things, but we've added biofuel fuel, um, as part of our commitment, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, solar, geothermal, we've done a couple field geothermal jobs. Um, energy audits, we work with MassSave and do energy audits. Um, higher efficiency equipment, we always try to upsell and get people to buy stuff more, more efficient, um, burner booster, and then crystal clear water, which is a, a water treatment company. Um, so the biofuel, we've been doing 2% bend of biofuel for the past um, six years. Um, it's renewable energy. It comes from vegetable oils, animal fats, and of course, um, soy. Um, a lot of people don't think that we should use our farmland to create anything other than food, but um, we do. it can be used, and soy can be used to uh, make fuel also. Um, solar, we have solar solutions for both home and small commercial, um, saves on electricity. There are tremendous tax advantages. In most cases, you can enjoy a five to six year payback on an investment in solar. Um, that is specifically in Massachusetts. Right now, I'll add one more thing that um, anybody that was affected by the tornado, there is a dollar a watt that you can get from the, f that was put aside after the tornado. Um, if you were affected by the tornado, you probably have a very good solar site. And there are, uh, there's a dollar a watt per, per um, watt that you put on your building that you can get from the government to help pay for a solar installation at your site. Um, geothermal uses the, the grounds, a pretty constant temperature. So this talks just a little bit about the fact that you can get heating and cooling from the ground because the ground's always 55 degrees and you can get heat out of it in the winter and cooling out of it in the summer. It's safe. There's tremendous tax advantages in this also. Um, mass energy audits. Uh, mass save is part of the national grid program. We all pay for it. If you read on your electric bill, there's a, the third line down or the fourth line down. Is uh, We all pay for this service. And if you don't use it, you're just paying for something you're not using. So we encourage people to call MassSave, have them come in and do an audit in your house if you have any interest in saving money on your energy bills. And it can be electric, could be gas, could be oil. Um, you can insulate, you can put new windows in. There's 0% loans, and uh, there's heating equipment upgrades that can be done to help um, increase your efficiency of your home. Um, higher efficiency equipment. There's equipment now that's made by oil that, are, that go over 90%. Um, gas condensing furnaces, um, on-demand water heaters, these are just a few of the things that save money. The burner booster is something that I installed in my building next year, with next door, I mean, um, last year. Um, it's essentially a way to take a commercial building or large residential buildings and increase the efficiency of your equipment between 20 to 25, 30% um, to cut the usage um, of fuel by a cleaner burning and a greater, um, uh, it's more like a gas combustion um, where we take oil and raise the pressure and, and increase the combustion efficiency of the heating equipment. Um, crystal clear water, I know that uh, 
I don't know about you guys, but a lot of people out there buy bottled water, and we see a lot of bottled water on the streets and on the, you know, in the trash and et cetera. Um, if you don't drink the water that comes out of your faucet, you should consider buying a system because it'll pay for itself in a couple of years. So this is just one more thing that can be done. It was really interesting to hear you say that uh, with me talking about crystal water tonight, and you know, there's been talk about the uh, chlorine and chloramine and all that stuff, and there was concern about that. And, um, so a lot of people are buying bottled water. Bottled water is very expensive to buy. It's very expensive to get rid of the plastic and et cetera. So it's an environmental hazard, the plastic is. So um, if you, you can get water clean enough to drink out of your faucet, well-wise, public water, you don't need to, you can take those water bottles and refill them and reuse them. Um, so this is just a little bit of what Tassies does. We are an energy company. Everybody thinks of us. I've heard people say, I didn't know you did that. I didn't know you did that. Well, here's what we do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Tassi. And I didn't know you did all that either. It's wonderful. Thank okay. you. Councilor Clemens. Um, Mr. Uh, Jeff, you guys are part of the Make South Bridge Home campaign, correct? Yeah, one of the reasons why we have folks uh, coming in is that we're trying to appreciate the uh, efforts of folks that have signed up for the Make Southbridge Home, that we do have several corporate partners that are trying to work with the community, and this is just one effort. I think one thing that's interesting is I don't think a lot of people know what we have here homegrown. So one opportunity is to give them a, a few minutes to be able to say what they do so folks do know. So definitely appreciate and appreciate the loyalty and the support that, that uh, Mr. Tassi has shown. Thank you very much. Yes, and I think you've done a very good uh, creative usefulness of the time that we've given you here this evening, and, and hopefully you'll be an inspiration for more people when they come up to get well, a little more creative with their it's presentations. It's a great opportunity to be in front of you and, and in front of the public that, that do watch this program. I, I think it's a great thing that it's publicized, to, that, it's pub, that it's on TV, and, and I appreciate all your guys' time that you guys give to the community, too, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on from that. Next. I'm going to wait f for a minute. Okay, agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. Do I have any citizens who wish to come forward this evening? Good evening. Monique Mana, 20 Maple Street, right here in good old Southbridge. Um, I'm just coming forward. Um, the Future Southbridge Group has started up their um, community cleanup efforts. We started a month later. <laughs> Um, we all had busy schedules when the original date started with the town, so we, um, we just went out a, a couple weeks later, and they did. Um, we did some cleaning up um, Saturday, and we had a few people show up, and we thank them very much for coming out. Thank you. It was very much appreciated. Um, every year when we do these cleanups, we know that everyone in town, the majority of the people, they do their best. Um, to try to keep their neighborhoods clean. But then you have that, that percentage that just don't seem to care. <laughs> they throw the trash out their windows, they, they, they throw their trash out the cars, they, 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 they just, it's like the sidewalk is their garbage pail or something, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. There's some, there's some heavy areas that we um, worked on down on West Main Street to help clean up this for this coming weekend's carnival mm. that um, is, will be going on, um, put on by the, um, the um, Southbridge Police Youth Association for their scholarships that they give to kids. Um, so they had their group down there, and we worked our way down there. And let me tell you, it looked pretty darn nice when we, you know, everybody was done. But then you go down there today and you see some of the same old spots. So just try to, um, I don't know, be more self-conscious about where you're going to throw your garbage. I mean, it's so easy to throw your garbage on the car of your car, um, on, on, on the, the floor of your car or something and pick it up when you get out of the car instead of throwing it out the window. 
you know, or, or, or have a bag in your car to, um, to, to throw your garbage in and just take it out when you get out of your car or something. Or, you know, put that gum wrapper in your pocket. You know, it's, it's better than going on the ground. That's all I have to say about that. So anyways, also, um, I wanted to mention that I'm a friend of Fritz's. And Fritz is for Project Pop. And Fritz says, pick I can't it hear up. you, Mrs. Manna. I said, I'm a friend of Fritz's. Okay. And um, Fritz is, um, he, he started Project Pop, and Fritz says to pick it up. Fritz is a dog. I know Fritz. I know Fritz personally. He's a very nice dog. <laughs> um, while we were cleaning up in, in the areas going down West Main Street, is like every five minutes, watch out for the the dog do. Watch out for the dog do. Now I know at one time there were um, like bags um, around town, posts where you could get the bags and, and scoop up your poop. <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. I know one on Main Street got destroyed after the bags got all, somebody played with the bags and threw them all over the place because uh, I remember cleaning those up. <laughs> um, but when you take your dog out, take a bag with you. I mean, I, I believe it's the in, in our bylaws that we're supposed to clean up after our pets. Yes. So, um, you know, instead of ruining a pair of shoes or something, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so anyways, our next um, community cleanup effort is June 16th, um, tentative date, Saturday at 9 o'clock. More information will be provided. We'll have um, announcements in the newspaper, um, on the websites, um, our Facebook page. Um, and maybe we'll have something on the scroll, too. But I just want to put that out there. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Mana, as always. Do we have anybody else like, wish to come up this evening? Just, uh, Madam Chair, if you don't mind, we do have several of those doggy stations still up. They have been vandalized, but we do replace them as they get vandalized. So they, they are still there. OK, thank you. Hi, Maureen Doyle, 771, Lebanon Hill. I'm just here to encourage you to uh, vote to pass the bylaw, because we don't have a right to farm um, bylaw in Southbridge, so we need the bylaw of the six hens, um, you know, the whole thing, um, to say stay healthy and sustainable. I think it's really important, and if people don't want to do it, they don't have to. <laughs> Um, and in the Make Southbridge Home program, um, this bylaw change would encourage people who care about those issues. I heard of one person who said that um, she knew somebody who wanted to move to Southbridge but wouldn't until this bylaw was passed because she has hens and she's not going to get rid of them. Um, so something to think about. So please vote for the bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Doyle. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward? Just state your name and address, please. My name is Charlotte Barton. I live on 671 Eastford Road. I'm also here in support of raising hens, uh, especially backyard chickens. I've moved to Southbridge about three years ago, so I'm a newer resident, but I have been in Massachusetts my whole life. Uh, out in Attleboro is where I grew up. So I just want to encourage this because I do feel that sustainability is a future that we should be looking towards, and it's also a nice hobby. You know, I know in this, in this area that there's the Woodstock Fair, and people actually do show chickens. They are a good pet to actually have, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to come forward? Sean Moriarty, 44 Maggie Lane. I actually have this to pass. Uh, coming up, I have, I have three quick things I just wanted to point out or, or mention. Uh, one, uh, uh, more or less a kudos to uh, the, the local commission on disabilities. They had an event uh, this past week uh, that I was invited to and stopped down at. And uh, you see the Center of Hope and various other groups uh, in town here and there. Uh, but when you see the middle school auditorium cafeteria filled up with all these different groups. Uh, it, it helps remind you all the resources we have in town. Uh, secondly, and what I've passed out, 
uh, are basically two, basically just uh, some shameless self-promotion for Relay for Life. Uh, our, the Relay for Life team that, uh, that I'm on, uh, we're putting together two fundraisers coming up. Uh, one is Saturday, May 26th, which is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it's a wiffle ball tournament. We've done this in the past for uh, uh, Aislin Cipro, a young girl who uh, has had cancer for pretty much her entire life in town here. Uh, so that's going on, on on May 26th. You can find information in the paper and uh, on Facebook and things like that uh, by just looking up that information. And secondly, uh, something that we're trying this year is what we're calling a flag subscription service. And basically what we're doing is you'll, ha you'll get a flag similar to this. It's all wrapped up now. So a flag similar to this. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're collecting $10 uh, and with that $10, you will get uh, on, on four of the big patriotic holidays, Memorial Day, Flag Day, uh, 4th of July, as well as Veterans Day, uh, myself or one of the other people in our group will come by uh, and basically plant one of these in your lawn for you uh, for each, and, each of those four holidays. Uh, so basically, it's, it's, if you do the math, I guess 250 a holiday, which isn't too bad, um, and just a nice way to kind of show some patriotism uh, as well. So that information is also out there. Uh, and if people want, they can obviously feel free to contact me, 774-230-6870, uh, uh, or by email, S-H-A-U-N-M-O-R-I-A-R-T-Y, then the number nine at gmail.com. Thank you, Sean. Do I have anybody else wish to come forward this evening? Any other citizens? Okay, we're gonna move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Agenda item number nine, vote to ratify change order nine. I'm sorry, I'll say again. Vote to ratify change order number four in the amount of $46,417 revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Regis? Just, uh, I guess, clarification is in this change order number five? Four. It's four. Well, actually, is it five? It says five on the, that's probably I the think right it's number. four. It says four on the Regis. I believe it is, I believe it is number five. It is five, I'm sorry. So it is vote to ratify change order number five in the amount of $46,417. Revised total is requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser Associates for the Middle High School Project. We have a, um, a motion and a second. Count. Can I do Certainly. Just to, uh, we are coming up on the completion of the school and I think it may be a, a good opportunity just to kind of let folks know where we stand and, and what this is. Uh, we are, uh, we do anticipate having the school turned over. Uh, substantial completion will be achieved by June 18th. This is in the, uh, the change order we had originally envisioned June 1st. Our real target date was uh, September 1st, so we are on target for, for that. Uh, after June 18th, there will be a, a whole bunch of technology going into the facility, and the facility will be turned over to us by August 7th. And then folks uh, from the school department will be able to occupy the building and get trained prior to the school year. So we are very much on target um, in terms of both time and in terms of money. Uh, we will come in. It is my hope that we will come in for a uh, soft landing, but we are on target uh, in terms of the financing of the project and we do anticipate that this project will be complete uh, within the existing budget. The only caveat that we are providing for is that when the, when the material gets submitted to the MSBA, the state agency, they audit as they go, and if there's uh, issues with the audit that may fluctuate, and we are trying to take into account uh, some elements of that, but we do have available contingencies uh, left that should be able to bring us to the conclusion of the project and I just wanted to let folks know, I think it's the third Saturday of the month that there are tours uh, that for folks that want to see the facility. Uh, so if you contact the superintendent's office, uh, and if you do represent a group, uh, I am happy to go out with uh, groups myself and, and kind of show the building in off hours. We do want to stay out of the way of the workers so we can get the building done in a timely fashion. But with that said, 
Uh, we certainly will make arrangements for tours. I, I know the realtors went through, which I think was a great idea. And if there are other groups like that that would like to see the facility, we certainly can, can arrange for that to occur. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Any, any other? No? Can I have a roll call, please? Councilor Livingan? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to ratify the proposal of CBE Technologies of East Providence, Rhode Island in an amount not to exceed $336,000 $540 for the installation of telephony LAN technology in the new middle high school. So moved. Any discussion? I'll just do a. Go ahead. Just in, in terms of uh, this project, uh, this is part of the $76 million. This is really the equipment for the facility. Uh, the total budget in this area is $1.2 million. Uh, to date, we've done a lot of the technology in the classroom. Uh, this actually buys uh, over 100 phone units, uh, the administrative office phones, and then also the voiceover, um, I, the voiceover, the internet protocols, the um, IP uh, phone system will be included in this purchase. And then the beginnings of the uh, local area network, the core switches and the edge switches. Uh, so this is what constitutes the uh, appropriation request for this evening and what we still have left to um, retro uh, to, to fit out in this building are basically the computers and also the uh, the final connections to the local area network this gets the basically the core functions to it and the, the wireless uh, access points and the uh, routers are what will be needed as well as the uh, software and the hardware to produce the wireless network so a vast majority of this building is going to be a wireless facility, uh, so it should be state of the art. But just in terms of the appropriation this evening, uh, the amount that's being appropriated is for those areas, and we will be back uh, through the school building committee for the computers and the, to finalize the, uh, the local area network. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. If nobody has anything else, roll call, please. Councilor Marcucci. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to amend the Southbridge zoning map by expanding the light industry zone at the intersection of Pleasant, Walcott, and River Streets by rezoning property currently zoned to family residential to light industry as recommended by the Southbridge Planning Board. The property is located at 114 Pleasant Street, Assessor's Map 31, Lot 39. So moved. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Nine yes. Thank you, and that is the second reading. We'll have one more coming down the pike. Thank you. Number two, agenda item number 12. Vote to amend the Southbridge zoning map by expanding the general business zone along Main Street near the intersection of Main and Marcy Streets by rezoning two properties currently zoned to family residential to general business. As recommended by the Southbridge Planning Board, the properties are 80 Marcy Street and the adjourning parking lot, Assessor's Map 35, Lots 108 and 109, and this too is the second reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Councilor McDonald? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 13. Vote to submit the following proposed amendment to the Southbridge Zoning Bylaw to the Planning Board-SBGA and request 
that they receive public comment in compliance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5, amend Section 502 of the Southbridge Zoning Bylaws to allow raising and keeping of household chickens by permit from the Board of Health in single family zones only, on lots of at least three quarter acre in size, with chickens kept at least 25 feet from adjacent lots for a maximum of six adult hens and a maximum of 12 chickens in total per property, with, appro with appropriate housing for every season, enforced by the animal control officer, with no roosters allowed, and with fenced area for all chickens. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor Vandal? Thank you. I think the, it's great to let the people have chickens in town if they want them. The thing is, is the three quarters of an acre is too much. You, you, they could have narrowed it down because you know, that's the common thing. People want to you know, get chickens and they want their own eggs and stuff and it shows responsibility to the kids. And you know, I had chickens as a youngster and I lived in a six family house and nobody, nobody ever objected. The only time they ever objected is when I came home with a rooster, my father wasn't too happy the next morning. And, and I think that three quarters of an acre is too much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, process, I guess. Is it one or the other, 13 or 14? Or can we do 13 and then effective immediately 14 while 13 is being considered? What is the process, please, so I can? I'm going to defer to the, to the planning director, Madam Chair. And by that, Councilor Regis means not, um, agenda item 13 and agenda item 14. Yes, thank you. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, the answer to your question, Councilor, is yes. Both of them would be appropriate to do. Number, uh, question number 13, or item number 13 is as part of a statutory process, and uh, number 14 is a suggestion that the planning board entertain special permits under section 50, uh, 501.2 or 502.1, which is um, a section of the zoning bylaw that allows uses that are not included in our zoning bylaw by special permit. And the idea uh, is that it would give the planning board a chance to try out on a trial basis some of the concepts that have been included in Councillor um, uh, re referred to one of them, which was the size of the lot. There wasn't consensus on what size lots should be available. And Jim Morin suggested that perhaps trying it on a trial basis where you give special permits that are uh, only good for a year to see if on a smaller lot it would work. Okay, so, so I, myself, I could vote yes on 13, and while that long and tedious process plays itself out of uh, changing the zoning bylaw, then 14 would become effective imme immediately. Yes. That, okay. You are right. Although both of them are long and tedious processes, but hopefully um, the statutory process would be longer, so we'd have a chance to get a couple of um, special permits going. So for 14, what would be the process for 14 then? Well, 14, um, we would let people apply for uh, special permits, mm -hmm. and we would use the criteria that you see here. Mm -hmm. uh, if we approved them, we would use those criteria um, to impose conditions on the special permits. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Ackley. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Marcucci, did you, have, did you want to follow up with um, yes. Mrs. Ackley? with your question earlier. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ackley, in the planning and development, the subcommittee meeting, it says uh, that you had stated, you know, the state law and two to five acres and prove that you can generate an income of $1,000 per acre per year to have chickens. Yes. Can you explain uh, that? Well, it's according to Mass General Law, if you have five acres, 
that means that you have a farm according to Mass General Law and you can go ahead and farm and no town could say you couldn't have chickens on five acres or more. In addition, Mass General Law recently, um, this is what I was told, uh, passed a law that if you have two acres but you don't have five acres, but you have at least two acres, and you can prove that you earn $1,000 per acre per year that you could uh, raise chickens or whatever on those two acres because you would then be a professional farm on a small basis. But there is nothing on the books for under two acres, and there is nothing on the Southbridge books. So that's why this needs to happen. Thank or you. something. All right. Thank hmm. you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilor McDonald. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm in agreement with Councilor Vandal. Uh, I think three quarters of an acre might be too restrictive. I think it would be prudent to go back and look at it. I'm in favor of passing this um, to maybe see what size lot would be more appropriate based upon the average parcel size. Uh, in terms of designation of a farm, I, I, I don't think five acres or more automatically designates property as a farm. Um, in my recollection of uh, enforcing agricultural permits from a fire perspective, I think it still has to be designated as a farm in some sense. Um, and just one other, just a, a, a comment, because it's been an issue in the past. We did have these two agenda items on the agenda. We had two people speak about it at Citizens Forum. We just want to make sure we're because it's been a contentious issue before, so I'm not trying to be mm -hmm. pointing a finger, just mm -hmm. I think it deserves to be pointed out. But that's all I have. I intend on, on, pausing, on, on supporting this, and, and I think we need to look at the lot size. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Council Livingood? Yeah. I, I, when I was a kid, my grandparents had chickens, but they did have a farm. And I have some concerns. One, we have laws against cats and dogs running loose in town. I don't see how you're going to enforce chickens. I mean, we don't enforce the dogs and cats. How are we going to enforce people keeping control of their poultry? Two, chickens can really smell. And I'm saying can, they don't always do, but... And then the third thing is rodents and insects can be a problem with chickens. And I think we need to look at that, the fact that we've got a very tight town I'm not going to support it because I don't think chickens and livestock should be raised in a town. That's just my personal belief. But uh, if you want to take a try at it, I mean, God bless you. But they, they're not as cheap to raise as people think. And that's all I got. I mean, if you can't enforce dogs and cats, we're not going to enforce chickens either. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Did you have something? Councilor Spinelli and then Councilor Langevin. The um, agenda item number 13 allows the process to go forward for the planning board to collect data, to hold public hearing, to see how the public feel about all of the stipulations, including the three-quarter acre. So that process can take much longer than 14, but it doesn't mean that in 13 that three-quarters of an acre may be the final thing. It could change depending on opinion, could change on how the planning board votes in the final analysis to recommend a bylaw to come forward. But the beauty of it is, is that it does, 13 and 14 do both things. 13 allows the, the governmental process to go forward, forward for creating the bylaw, and then 14 allows people who have uh, a serious desire to have chickens as pets to be able to come forward to be granted a special permit with stipulations and the board also has the opportunity to learn how those stipulations are being met and how they're being carried out which then helps them in formulating and finalizing number 13 so I really think that uh, you know both of these are critical to be approved by us at this point so that we can find out what really happens and what doesn't. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Langevin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, as I was looking over this, um, again, one thing that stuck out, and actually, Council of Living Good did uh, just bring it up. Uh, one of it says enforcement of animal control officer. Big flag. We're having problems with dogs pooping on the sidewalks. We're having problems with dogs, cats. Again, I am going to vote to support this process and move it on and, and uh, uh, see where it goes. But again, I, I, 13, the enforced by animal control officer, then uh, the 14, enforcement of bylaw. Those are two huge flags of ours because we're still weak on a lot of things on those things. So um, all, I'm all in favor of uh, people raising their chickens and respecting thy neighbor. Um, but I just hope when it comes to us, and again, um, that we are enforcing our bylaws and we are making sure the animal Again, the animal, that's the big word, not dog officer, animal control officer is doing their part. That's my concern on this. Um, but I will vote in favor of this tonight and let it do due process. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Counselor. Is there anyone, did you wanna yeah, weigh, in? weigh in? Right. <laughs> um, I, I wanna point out, I, I would appear through both of these agenda items that the planning board has spent a lot of time energy effort and, and really tried to be mindful of the citizens in our community and, and their concerns, be it sustainability or be it their privacy and their, and their surroundings within their own, uh, their own properties that they pay for. And so I, I think I would agree with a lot of what's been said in terms of the first, pro the first part is a process that eventually could become our bylaw, whether it's three quarters, a half an acre, or you know, five acres down the road. That makes sense. And number 14, to address it immediately, because that is a concern for many, I certainly think it's a process that down the road, if it doesn't work, we have the ability to tweak and to, and to remove and not to allow it to happen. But certainly I would hope that what we do come up with as a, as a board is, is that we come up with something that is agreeable to all the citizens out there. So I, I think the process shows that the planning board has taken a lot of time with this and really considered everybody's concerns and has put safeguards in there. Certainly uh, enforcement is always an issue, but I think there are safeguards here that clearly indicate what will, what will need to happen, special permit enforced, and if you don't follow the rules, you won't have that special permit and your chickens will have to go. So I'm willing to try for the community to, um, to push forward with the chickens and see what happens. So that's just my view. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Councilor Vandal, you had something else? Do. On, on question number 13, three quarters of the way down, for a maximum of six adult hens and a maximum of 12 chickens in total. Mm -hmm. Six adult hens is, all, is what they said you could have, no roosters. Where does the 12 come in? If you're yeah, allowed six adult chicks. hens, chicks. you have chicks. You'd have to get rid of them eventually. You can only have six adults. But, but you can have six adults or six chicks or a total of 12 combination thereof, it can change, it can vary. If you had have, have, can I ask a question, have any of you ever had chickens? No. Chickens don't stink. They don't, no, no yeah. Well, you, whoever had your, ch wherever you see, smell chicken, it, they didn't take care of them properly. Uh, it was a farm. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Does anybody else wish to? Uh Throw the feathers in the ring. I mean, uh, talk about this. Okay. Well, can I have a roll call, please? Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Livingood? No. Councillor Micucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes, one no. Thank you. Agenda item number 14, vote to recommend that the planning board slash SPGA hear and consider special permits for up to four property owners of lots under five acres in single family zones only to raise and keep 
household chickens on a trial basis. The planning board slash SPGA should consider the following when placing conditions on the special permits, but may include additional conditions as needed. Permitting from the Board of Health, lot size, space from adjacent lots, maximum adult hens and maximum total chickens per property, appropriate housing, enforcement of the bylaw, no roosters allowed, and fencing requirements. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the recommendation of the subcommittee, uh, as far as enforcement goes, it says enforcement requirements, meaning that the special permit would consider enforcement requirements, what those might be. Now, agenda item 14 says enforcement of the bylaw. So the bylaw that we're trying to change, I don't understand, I guess. Which one is it? Mrs. Ackley. I believe that this is a typo. It was enforcement requirements, requirements meaning who is going to enforce it and how. Right, and that'll be determined under the special permit process, yes. not enforcement of the bylaw. Because there is no bylaw. Okay, so can we change that, Madam Chair? Just so to enforcement, requ did you say enforcement, enforcement requ requirements? Enforcement yes. requirement yes. or ments? Requirements. Yes. Okay. Motion so, to amend, uh, sorry, to I didn't Second. notice no, no, no. it. I just want to make sure we're, because <laughs> those are two different meanings and we'll have a problem. Do I have a second? I have a second. We have a roll call on that amendment to this. Madam Chair, do yes. we really need the amendment? Mm -hmm. Because enforcement of the bylaw, but they're going to be applying under 502.1 which is a bylaw which allows people to apply for a special permit when it's not clearly stated in the rest of the bylaws that, that it's approved. And the whole idea behind this trial basis was to allow the planning board to issue the special permits and yet they would, because 502.1 says you can establish any criteria that you want for the special permit, they're, they are going to be doing this by the very nature of people applying for the special permit itself. And so I, I would just say, technically speaking, they really, you don't really need to amend this, in my mind, you, because people at this point are going to be applying under 502.1, which is, which is a general catch-all bylaw that we have, which allows these things to occur. And technically speaking, the planning board can grant special permits under 502.1 without getting the permission of the town council to do this. Mm -hmm. This is being done out of courtesy so that people in general will know that they're going forward with 13 and also doing 14, which I think is a tremendous courtesy of the planning board to ask us to recognize it and to support this in the meantime. So I, 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 I think you can leave I mean, if you want to change that phrase, enforcement of the bylaw, but the bylaw is going to be under 502.1 because you can't do it otherwise because we don't have a bylaw yet. But that that bylaw allows you to do these catch-all applications, I believe. Okay, Councilor Clements and then Councilor McDonald. And let's add enforcement of bylaw 502.1 if indeed 502.1 is, as Councilor Spinelli says, an already enforceable bylaw, then it makes sense. It, the ambiguity of enforcement of the bylaw made us all refer back to the bylaw we're trying to change, but that clearly isn't. It's the special permit bylaw that we're discussing here, not the bylaw we're actually trying to change in general. So as long as we in, indicate, I think, that it's the special permit bylaw we're talking about versus okay. above. So I would just, I would all right. uh, amend it to enforcement of bylaw 502.1, special permit bylaw 502.1. And I'll amend my second. Yeah, okay. So that would be okay. how it would read. Is it, no? Is that, are you all set with that, Councillor? Because you, you had your hand up. That's what I was okay. on that same path. So, Councillor okay. Regis. All right, so I guess I'm confused. The way I read this is for the special permit itself to include enforcement requirements 
such that, say, the animal control officer, what enforcement? It's going to be up to the planning board. The planning okay. board will make that determination. I mean, these are the guidelines that we have in, in uh, 13, and then the, the planning board will determine whether or not, so I'm assuming, that that's, that that's what it's going to be. If they'll figure out the And then once they do, it will be the animal control officer who will be expected to enforce that bylaw. Does that make sense? I think it really was supposed to say enforcement and not of the bylaw. Enforcement of enforcement requirements. requirements? Enforcement requirements because the condition, the, the I'm quite sure that the intent was that issuing a special permit with conditions that it will be very clear in one of the conditions how it's going to be enforced. And it okay. will probably right. say that it's going to be enforced by the animal control officer and the Board of Health, um, the health director has already said that they would be very happy to do the permitting. And so that's why we okay. wrote it that way. I see. Okay. I think we've so made it you still confusion. feel then, Mrs. Ackley, that it should say enforcement requirements? I think that was the intent. Okay. Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilor in, Donald. Thank you, Madam Chair. In light of what uh, Mrs. Ackley has stated and in looking at agenda item four from the, e uh, the planning and development subcommittee minutes, I think, yeah, it's prudent we do that. So I'm going to withdraw my second. Just go with the, uh, I'm. Is, am I the only one who cannot hear you? I, I can't hear anybody up here. No, you're it's not the only time. one. I, I've okay. noticed that actually uh, we used to have monitors up here, which were the sole purpose were for projecting our own voices back at us so we could yeah, see. I, I, I'm having see a lot here. of trouble. So did you I say OK you. on enforcement requirements? I, I do. And okay. I know we're getting a little bit confused because there was an initial um, motion to amend by saying requirements. And then we changed okay. it again to 102. So I'm going to withdraw my second, okay. <laughs> the second second. Okay. <laughs> Start so, over. yeah, and I'll make the motion that we go back to the original enforcement requirements. requirements. Okay. And do I have a second on that? I'll second that. Okay. Could we have a roll call, please? Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Okay. I'm not going to read this whole thing over again. Um, we've made this adjustment. We have a, a second, a, a motion and a second on this. Does anybody have any further discussion? Councilor Vandal. Oh, I'm still confused on the other one. You six hens and you're up, you can have 12 chickens, right? Chicks. How are you going to have chicks when you have six hens and you're not allowed to roost up? You've got to fertilize these eggs. Is this a riddle? Because I, 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 I don't know. I, I See, really well, don't in the, know. In the future, yes. we should have some people up here that are knowledgeable of chickens. Yes. So that, you know, they're, okay. they're really great pets. You know, well, maybe a rooster comes by for a date and he leaves, <laughs> and then you end up with a, uh, six chicks. I don't know. That doesn't help. That's answer. not how it works in the chicken. Well. Councilor Clements has an answer. I'm an answer. dying to hear it. Okay. It's, it's not as colorful as yours, okay. Madam uh. Chair. Count, uh, Councilor Vandal, if you go and purchase chicks, you want to buy some extra chicks. Maybe you're going to raise them and slaughter them. Maybe you're going to be sustainable and eat your chickens. You're not going to have eggs. Sorry out there, but that's what we do. We eat chicken, right? So perhaps you have chicks that you purchase at the store. They get a little bigger. You're only supposed to have six hens. You got to do something, either sell them, eat them, or, or do something else with them. But so you could conceivably raise chicks to become hens, and maybe, or maybe but then the older you chicks. Six hens. You know, then you have to, at that point, you have to make a decision what to do with them. But until that point, until they grow up a bit, you have the ability to have chicks and hens. Thank you. Marry them. That would be my them. explanation to why they came up with this. I, I mean, anybody else? I don't know. I don't believe in the theory. Because you buy chicks from the from the store, sure. it's, and they grow, and then you have to do something with them. Eat them or sell them. Thank you. Thank you. Before anybody else comes up with anything, could we have a roll call, please? Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? No. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. 
Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Eight yes, one no? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number 15. <laughs> Vote to accept the layout of Commercial Drive as a public way and to refer to the Planning Board for non-binding recommendation. So, so moved. Second. Do I have any discussion? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number 16 is Councilor's Forum. We're going to start this evening with Councilor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Marcucci? I'm all set, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Vandal? Um, through you to the town manager. Lebanon Hill paving, is, are we all done up there? I'll check. To my knowledge, we are. Because uh, I got a call from you know, a lady on a corner, she said she called Mr. Daly about a month ago because she wasn't satisfied with the way they finished her property, meeting the road, the embankment it was too rough and they put lousy soil. She's got all kinds of stones in it and stuff. And I, I was told myself that they were coming back in the spring and the spring's long gone and, and nobody's, you know, come back. And I thought they were gonna hydro seed again because a lot of it got washed out in the... I'll, I'll check on it in the morning. Okay. If you have the specific address, I can look at that too. Okay. You, if... And this morning I got a call at 1119 from an individual. He told me that he had a Casella dumpster two years ago and he paid $130 a month for dumping it. And he says he's over $200. 65% increase in two years. He says, and somebody better take a look at it. So I'm bringing that up. 65% in two years is too much. Thank you. That's all I have. That's it? Okay. Council Langevin? Uh, just really one thing uh, uh, off of Mr. Moriarty got up and spoken. This is a really great thing about the American flag, but I do want the town manager, I spoke to you before, and hopefully we can move forward this uh, flags downtown this year. Uh, there's a lot of other communities do it. It's patriotic. Uh, maybe reach out to some uh, people's organizations. I know we have the brackets on the polls and stuff. If we can uh, move forward on that, I think that's just a nice, nice touch. Uh, so if we could do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. And last but not least, I do want to wish uh, Mr. George Parent. Uh, he's been great to this community, always giving, so I just want to let you know that you are in my thoughts and prayers. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Spinelli? I'd like to um, ask a question to piggybacking on Councillor Vandal. I was under the impression, no, not chickens, piggyback onto it though, we'll go to pork right Hi. now. I was under the impression when, when Lebanon Hill was done, that there's, all along the property lines, it was just like rough edging that was left. There was no real curbing, like a Cape Cod berm or um, a rounded berm on a lot of the property. And I thought that the company that did the paving said that they were gonna be coming back this spring or summer to put a berming in and then to reseed the areas. So. It needs... Well, I, I thought there was something. Yeah, I just, could be just, totally wrong. Yeah, there, there were issues with the berm. Mm -hmm. Berms were changed on the hill. We did do some, um, I guess, redesign and, and reconstruction. So we did change some of that, made it a little wider, took a, put in some curtain drains to try to help with the icing during the winter. So oh, there was right. a lot of work done. But to the point, you know, I, I will check because you can't plant grass in the middle of the winter. So if they have to rehydro seed, we'll, I'll check on that. I just, right. I don't know the status off the top of my head. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Councilor Livingood? Nothing tonight, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McDonald? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of things. Uh, first, I just want to remind the council and the uh, citizens that uh, Memorial Day observances will be held Monday, May 28th 
at 8.30, beginning at the town hall. Um, we are looking for people, if you, you're, we, our, veteran, our veteran pool is, is aging, especially those World War II vets, uh, and many of them can no longer walk in the parade, so we are always looking for vehicles. Uh, I know Councilor Spinelli had used uh, his last year, and if he's so inclined again this year, we'd be very much appreciative of that. We're also looking for uh, Jeeps, uh, or ideally if uh, convertibles serve well. Uh, it will be a rain or shine event, because Memorial Day happens once a year, and it's not something we postpone. Uh, we will be having the, the Veterans Council, which sponsors and, and runs the event, will be having a meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Community Center to uh, discuss the finalized uh, uh, procedures and whatnot. So if you're interested in attending, it's open to those who want to attend. Yeah. Um, I know there's been a lot of uh, discussion on it in the paper and whatnot. I, I've missed the last meeting, but uh, in terms of the uh, discussion on the garbage tickets, uh, my phone has been ringing nonstop um, in, in relation to this, as I'm sure my peers on the council as well. Um, I saw a newspaper article that alluded to the fact that the administration is asserting that many of the complaints about the bylaw and the enforcement activities of it are from absentee landlords and tenants. And I can tell you that my experience from the phone calls I got, that is not my, the case that I've gotten from phone calls. I had received phone calls from elderly people, from people I went to school with who owned properties, who for all intents and purposes have every intention of following the law, try to do their best, and uh, it, it seems to be that it's, it's being over-policed. Uh, my concerns stem from the fact that and I just have to call it like I see it. Uh, back in the early days of this particular sitting of the council, we had a meeting in Sturbridge. And uh, I walked out in protest simply because I, I didn't agree with the format or the, the location. While I did not attend, it was videoed and I did get to watch that videotape. And there was a discussion about raising revenue through the increased application of, of fines. And I can tell you from whether you're running a business and you have late fees or if you're doing government and you have fines, that's not the way to get income. It has actually the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish. And I hope that we can get that squared away. I was disconcerted to hear that we had scheduled an EHS subcommittee. Uh, again, I was out of town at that time, but it was intended to discuss the fine structure and I understand it turned into a forum. Now that's just what I'm getting from others. Uh, it's my intent to at least put forward an agenda item to this council to amend that bylaw to change it to a more appropriate structure. And under our town council rules, we'll need three councilors to put that forward if it's not uh, uh, received well. But I do have an intention to do that, and I think we should look at it. A citizen who called me suggested uh, that we do some kind of fine structure that's more in keeping with other fines of a similar nature. I mean, $250 fine, that's something we do for the violation of the sex offender registry. This is nowhere near rise to that level. So hopefully we can get that right. Uh, I understand the need for good order and discipline in a community, but excessive fines is not the way to go. It places an unnecessary burden on our people. Another item I want to talk about is I've seen a series of ads over the last few weeks in the Southbridge Evening News relative to positions. Now I have here a letter dated March 24, 2010. It's the budget message from the town manager to the town council in regards to the in regard to the 2011 budget and on page two at the bottom of the page it says restructuring will occur with preserving rank and file frontline services in place to this end the chief of engineering services position at dpw currently just under seventy thousand dollars will be eliminated october 1st 2010 and replaced with a position to be determined either a junior engineer trainee or budget analysis position with a salary of no greater than forty three thousand starting after october 1st 2010 Approximately six weeks ago, I saw advertised in the Salvage Evening News the replacement for Maureen Chesler's position, the Chief of Engineering Services, and it's my understanding that we have indeed hired that position. All without any discussion that came forward that I recall in the meetings I've attended and the ones I've looked back on the meeting, the ones I've missed, uh, which are only two in the last six months, um, that we were going to do that. This past week, we have seen, in, I have seen in the newspaper, the advertisement for another position, a new position, a human resources director position, part-time, still without coming before this council. Now last year at budget season, right at this time, 
I had raised concerns and made suggestions on what we could cut from the budget. And there was statements made that there's no, nothing to cut. Where is it to cut? It's a bare bones budget, yet we were able to buy a $172,000 sweeper, which was not discussed and we did not budget for. Now a human resources position, which in the history of this town has been the requirement of the manager's office. A manager whom we gave a substantive, substantive pay raise to most recently. And now we're being asked to divvy those duties out to another position. So we're giving an increased pay for less responsibility and less duties. And that is not a good, prudent course of action. That is not what I term, what I've been elected to, in being a good steward of the public's money. Um, we have put on a new police officer, a new firefighter paramedic. We have a part-time recreation director, which is also advertised in the paper this week and currently being filled by... There's also an advertisement to replace uh, and provide now custodial services and administrative services for the veterans and, and council on aging position over at... Uh, that, that's all fine if we need this, but it also is fine if we can afford it. Now, we visited a 3.7% tax increase on the citizens of Southbridge recently. We have the... What, it's always an issue. People are... are raising concern. And that leads into my next concern of a 30-minute hearing on a $49 million budget before we're going to vote that budget, May 21st. We're going to have a 30-minute hearing for the public to come in and express their concerns on something that we vetted through subcommittee. We're going to come up and have a 30-minute hearing on a $49 million budget with all of these other things in here. Uh, and I just don't think that that does justice to the citizens. And I, just, I have to call it like I see it, Madam Chair. Um, I think we can do better than that. I started in government 32 years ago come this October. Whether it be in a volunteer capacity or a paid capacity, I've been involved in government continuously since then. And it has always been what was taught to me by, by my mentors, whether it be my father or the fi Fire Chief Gregoire or Ovi DeRosia or many other names that we can say here that government was there and existed to be a servant to the people. But it seems more or less these days, and the feedback that I get from the citizens and the earful I get, whether I'm stopped in the supermarket or I'm called at home, is that we've become a servant unto ourselves. Now, we're going to mark and commemorate the one-year anniversary of the hurricane, of the tornado, rather, and the devastating effects it had on our citizens. But what are we commemorating? I mean, yes, we came together and we did good work uh, in, in meeting the immediate need and the department heads did their respective work, but what have we done? I've heard many people come up here asking for more assistance from the people affected in that area and I haven't heard too many come up and say what a great job things are continuing to do. That doesn't mean we're not doing a good job, but shouldn't we better spend our time instead of planning some type of event and actually meeting the needs of the people that were affected by that event? Sturbridge was able to take care of a significant pile of debris that was on Route 15 by effectively making their government work for the people. And I think we need to do that same thing. We could have done that with $172,000 we spent on a street sweeper. So if we're going to commemorate it, let's also use that as a marking point to do something substantive to actually meet, better meet the needs. I know we've done it part way, but to continue and actually make government work for people uh, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to let the manager address some of that, but I, I do want to make one, one point. Unlike you, I attend most of the hearings that are here. You don't seem point to be order, able to. I'm, no, no, I'm going. You, you've spoken, sir. No point, no point of, order. of order right I now. Have a point of no. Order, and at, this at is counselor's forum, and this is and, and I want to respond to that because I have the experience of attending some of these public hearings. As do I. And I can certainly say, and I'm not this is not a dialogue. You've said your piece, you're through. If you're making a debate, excuse me, right excuse debate. me, this is not a debate. You've spoken, and I want to answer one of your charges. In terms of public hearings. I've attended public hearings, many public hearings here. And after the hearing, you look out into the audience. It may be five people. The manager or whoever is putting on that hearing, usually the manager, asks, are there any questions? Nobody comes forward. 
The last public hearing that was held, I watched on TV because I can't always make every single meeting. There was nobody here. There were the people up here presenting a public hearing and there was not one person here. So I do have an issue with the notion that a 30-minute public hearing on a $49 million budget is not enough time. That is not the case. People don't show for these public hearings. They didn't show for the water and sewer public hearing, and they won't show for the budget public hearing, I can assure you. And I'm not saying that I like it, but a half an hour is certainly going to, you, if you want to see that for yourself, be here before, at 6.30 and, and see for yourself. I'd love people to prove me wrong, but people don't come to the public hearings. I've been coming to the public hearings for seven years. They don't come. So that's, that's kind of not a realistic complaint. And beyond that, I am going to let the manager answer you. Madam Chair, I appreciate the opportunity. And, and certainly, I just, I, I do take offense when, when things are portrayed in an inaccurate manner. Um, just a couple points on the Chief of Engineering Services. You carefully said that it, that was March 24th of 2010, uh, the budget announcement. Uh, it was my intent at that point that was attempted to be accomplished. It was this council, this council that told me they wanted that position fully funded. So that position was fully funded. Subsequent to that action, an employee retired. An employee retired. That retirement was filled. So, you know, in terms of new positions, I, I really take offense that n none of these positions that have been mentioned tonight are new positions. They may have different names, but they're not new positions. The HR position, which was vetted and was in my, I believe it was in my budget message this year, I wanted that position. We lacked the available funds to obtain that position. That position was going to be funded utilizing existing resources. The majority of that position, I believe 90% of that position, is coming out of a staffer that departed my office or departed the administration's office and moved on. So all what we've done is we've said confidential clerk slash HR specialist. Because quite frankly, I think it's been proven in several of these subcommittee meetings that there is a desperate need for additional HR skills and ability. So what we've done is we've taken an existing position that the person left and we have converted it to basically just asking for someone with spe some HR background to try to improve one of the weak areas in, in our office. On the veterans custodian position, that position has been in the budget for numerous years. Primarily, I think it's 100% funded. The, the salary is 100% funded from a grant. That person moved on. So it's not a new position. It's a replacement of a vacancy. As in all three examples that were provided said new positions. Not one of them is new. They are all just vacant positions that we are fully funding. The fact that they came at the same time is more just indicative of we had a fire chief retire. We're trying to hire a fire chief. So is that going to be considered to be a new position as well? I, I just, it, it's, it's, I, do, I do take a little offense at the semantics because these are vacancies. And when a vacancy occurs, generally the rule is that we're, we're allowed to fill those vacancies. On the public hearing, you know, the public hearing, we specifically put the, the request in for the council that the public hearing will run as long as it needs. And then the, the council meeting would start after the public hearing. In my experience, in the four years I've been here, coming up on four years that I've been here, I think we haven't even needed the full half an hour. So again, hopefully people do come out and, and have a discussion in regards to it. Uh, and certainly we'll have the department heads here to be able to respond to questions. On the trash issue, uh, and I do wish to, to comment on that, I should have brought it up under manager's announcements. There was instruction given to the police to go out and enforce this bylaw, and they were told that they would have some discretion and I was hoping that discretion would be shown. And I think as a result of that public meeting, it was clearly obvious to me that in some circumstances, the letter of the law was followed and some elderly people were caught up in that. We did make a, an administrative change. We did go and we looked at the folks that received fines and that the hearing officer was given strict instruction that those fines, the $250 fine, should be reduced down to a warning so that the one-timers, people that truly were not aware that they had violated the law, would have that converted. 
I would also say I looked at the files myself of the people that appealed. Since we started the enforcement on this, we have kept records of who has received what. In probably 80 to 90 percent of the cases, the folks that got cited were folks that had, one of them had as high as seven, seven town interactions saying, please don't continue to do what you're doing. They had letters sent to them, they had uh, tickets put on their bags, you know, just advisory tickets, and they had uh, specific letters mailed to them, door hangers put on to their doorknob, and they still decided to violate the, the rules. That was the majority of the ones that I looked at, and I just did a sampling. So to the point, and, and I agree with the point that we were a little too assertive on the enforcement of the law, in terms of uh, the police officers, I was hoping that more discretion would be shown. We've made some adjustments to that. I don't want to encourage, because I do think, and one of the things that came out of that public meeting is that the number of complaints when we, when we initiated enforcement in a, in a serious way, the number of complaints dropped significantly. So the community is being cleaned up. There is a real value to it. I think we are replaying that, that uh, public meeting that was held so folks can have that. I'm not gonna rehash the, the whole thing, but any time that the council makes a policy change, I think administration should be entitled to tweak it and fix it, because we're not always gonna get it exactly right. So we are tweaking it. We are working to make sure that it is more responsive to what the council's wishes are. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like the chance to respond to that. You have two minutes, Counselor, and that's it. You've had plenty of time to expound on your issues. And if, it, if it's going to take more than two minutes, I suggest that you talk to the manager after the meeting. Madam Chair, there is no time limit on counselors. And number I'm one, when you, you open it up, counselor, Madam Chair, when you open up discussion. No. Counselor, I'm the chair of this committee, whether you like it or not. I'm giving you two minutes. Go well, ahead. I take offense to the fact that we're the policy making body and the administration goes off and did it without coming back and checking this full council. Decisions are not made in subcommittee. They're discussed in subcommittee and recommendations are taken up to this full council. And if this council did not take up those things, then they should not be done because a policy hasn't been established. In terms of changing uh, the, the veteran service, it's my understanding that's a grant funded position, yet the person who fills that position is subject to a town retirement. And I don't believe you can do that. I don't believe it's, it's, it's legal to do that. If it's a grant funded position, it means it's supposed to be funded by the grant. Yeah, that's incorrect. And it's, it's limited to a blatantly blat blat incorrect. Okay. That's my understanding no. and I'm just stating that. Okay. Well, it's incorrect. Never, well, I disagree. Um, and nevertheless, like I said, Counselors Forum, when we're at Counselors Forum, we have a chance to say something. If you're going to open up to debate, then that means we should have a chance to answer those things back as well. Sir, so. you are using this as just a forum, as a soapbox. Yes, box, a council As a forum. soapbox. No, it's a council. And everything forum. that you have said has been addressed. And I don't want people out in the audience getting the wrong impression on misinformation because you want to use it's this not as a soapbox. And in soapbox, of, yes. In terms of people not willing to come up and address this council is because they've been, I've had people tell me this. These are real people. Mm -hmm. They're probably watching right now and they know who they are. They don't want to come up here because they don't want to put up with this kind of grief. Okay. Right here, where a person expresses some type of disagreement and they get berated. Mm -hmm. And then they're told they're wrong. There's a difference, sir. You, you are a town councilor and you should have the, show the responsibility to come up here and when you discuss something, base it on fact and not, and not opinion. Because people out there listen to you and take what you say as fact. And, the same and if they it do is people. not fact, and that's why I'm sitting back and letting the people who do know the facts answer you. You've been answered. And We're going you, to Madam move Chair. on now. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. A number of things. Um, I was at that meeting that was sanctioned by the Attorney General's office that was an off-site uh, meeting. I do remember discussion about um, snow tickets and uh, parking violations in the winter and the cost of that. I do remember that, you, uh, that a counselor had left because they felt it was an illegal meeting. Um, and I remember the rest of us spending five or six hours discussing many, many important topics at that meeting. Enough said on that. Um, moving forward, the comment was made on the forum. When we, had an EH, when we had a meeting, and there was a lot of information, a lot of people were complaining, we discussed having an EHS meeting to discuss these problems. 
during that week to make in a timely manner to get these issues right up there in front of the people. Why not have a public forum? We've said this before. Don't have to hash it out. A lot of you have watched and a lot of you have called me also, which I respect those phone calls and I do respond. I'm sure many of us, all of us do. At that forum, we allowed people to discuss some of their problems, but we also allowed um, the people, again, who are, who are making the decision of whether to ticket or not, or enforcement, or Casella, who is collecting the trash, we allowed them up here so that they could answer questions directly. Again, coming direct information. I felt it was very helpful, and I also said that um, we wanted to bring up any more information, any more comments, more suggestions, Mr. Buxton's uh, suggestion on, on a reward program at the next EHS meeting. I'm following through on that by planning another EHS meeting. In the meantime, while I was away on a business trip, because this is first, most on my mind, I called the town manager to find out what had happened in the, in the interim, in those few days after that forum. I wanted to know that things were being done, not waiting till a meeting, not waiting to the next town meeting to sort of, um, what do we usually say, you know, just sort of drop it on them, but to say, is this being done? Because that, according to council rules, is what we're supposed to do. When we have a problem, when a concern is brought to us by a citizen, it is our duty to, in a timely manner, confront or discuss that with whoever we need to, whether it be the town manager when it's an employee issue perhaps or something else, some other. We as counselors are not supposed to wait and just argue in front of the cameras for you. We're supposed to do our job 24-7, seven days a week. That's what we're elected to do. And that's what I chose to do when I was away to make sure, and I was glad to find out that while I hadn't been at the meeting, um, that a meeting had been held with the hearing officer, with the police officers, with the Board of Health, with the department heads in terms of this. And while it's still not perfect, there's room for improvement. It is being handled in a more uh, compassionate manner, I guess I would call it. And on that note, we'll leave that for the next DHS meeting, too, to discuss more and to tweak it and to make it better. And I do appreciate those phone calls, so feel free to keep calling me. Now, um, in terms of some of these other things, I think Mr. Clark answered, but I, my recollection on the human resource part-time and all, that was something that I know myself and a number of others said, if this money has to come from some other resource, an additional resource. We don't want it. I expect that it should be taken out of the people that we already have. We have people perhaps not as efficient as they could be. Let's use some, let's make them more efficient and make them uh, serve their time. So that's how I address that. And what really, really bothers me most tonight is your comments. The, uh, the thought to, to do something on the anniversary of the tornado, which affected many of our people, may not be what they want. They may want more leaf pickup, more, more brush pickup, more debris pickup, and many other things. But I saw this as an opportunity to remember and to make an observance of something tragic that happened to our community, but also to celebrate the resilience and the resolve and the fortitude and strength of all those people who've made it through this year. It's a way of us to, to give back, to have, share a meal together, to respect them, and to, and to celebrate the fact there was no loss of, loss of life, and all that these people have been through and accomplished this year. And maybe that's minor to you. And maybe in the next time, Councillor McDonald, I won't include you on an email. Now I understand why you did not respond to that inclusion. But I don't find it as disrespectful in any way. I find it as a way to show, as council, as department heads, to give back to the community, even if it is just one free meal. It was just something that was meant, that came from a heartfelt passion to do something nice in this community, to do it at our shelter, which we have and we're very lucky to have, and to respect not only the people whose homes were affected, but those, whether it's the DPW who worked tirelessly 24 hours a day, or the police, or the fire, they're all invited. We want to just serve you. We want to show you that we remember you're here. We know you're still struggling. And while we can't always come up with the funds that you need because of rules and regulations that are sometimes beyond our control, we are compassionate to your needs, and we are here for you. And if there's anything we can do for you, you give us that call, like I asked. I just, I find that very disrespectful respectful on your part and, uh, and, and, and a sad, sad thing that you could take something that's supposed to be positive and to turn it around and make it so negative for your band, grandstanding. And I'm done with those comments, but I do want to mention there are a few other really good things going on in our community, and I was hoping this was all I was going to have to talk about. The Arts Center approached me again with an email, which I forwarded on to our, our station manager here. Hopefully it'll be on the cable. They are having a May Day celebration on Saturday, May 12th from noon to 6th. The, with music and dancing, a maypole uh, contest, a maypole queen contest, uh, beer and wine garden, and a wonderful Galapagos puppet theater at 2 o'clock. Again, the event is noon to 6, 
at our Art Center on Main Street, and I certainly hope that everybody um, can attend and show their support to that. Oh, there's also a butterflies and pollinators presentation at 1.30. Um, and as was mentioned, I just want to mention again, the Police Association's Carnival. I think this is a great opportunity to go out, support a wonderful organization Wednesday through Sunday this week. There's a lot going on. There's a lot in our community that's positive. And I hope you take that back tonight. We've done some good work here tonight. And I hope that you take the positive message and not the negative stuff that has come up here this evening. That's my hope for this community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Agenda item number 17, next meeting date. May 21st, Monday, May 21st, immediately following the 6.30 p.m. hearing um, right here in Council Chambers. Okay. Thank you. And agenda number 18 is adjournment. So All in favor? Meeting's adjourned. Good night.